Hi, and welcome to my channel, Budget Audio Review. Now today I've got a NAD 7020 receiver I acquired um, recently, really, uh, only because I had the NAD 302 amplifier and I was kind of see this, I thought I'll get this, uh, even though it's got a few thoughts of it, uh, see if I can get it going to a reasonable state. And just for a matter of curiosity, how did it compare with that NAD 302 amplifier that I had a little while ago? I've done a little review against two other amplifiers, uh, two probably better amplifiers than the 3020. Not that that's a bad amplifier, it just, in my opinion, probably come out uh, least favourable out the three. That review is a little link at the top there now if you wanted to go and see that. But it's against two good amplifiers of their time, and I just felt that this just fell into third place, even though it's still standing good, it still sounds great. And I've been listening to this since I've done a few repairs on it, it does sound good, you know what I mean? It's kind of one of them amplifiers you're going to get a lot of fun out of, uh, one of them amplifiers you don't want to turn off kind of thing. But anyway, let's just show you how I got this when I first got it. Let me push it on. Okay, so a lot of crackling and popping going on there. And it pretty much sounds like you're playing around with a tuner and you can't get the station, it's all listening and buzzing and all that kind of thing. But it's actually the main switch arcing over. The two contacts inside are not making proper contact. They wear out over time, they get dirty, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're gonna address that, but not in this video. I've kind of done these videos about half about face, shall we say. Uh, anyone else would have mended the switch, first of all, but I didn't have one of them switches. It's a special switch. Uh, here it is here, but come to it in a later video anyway. It's got uh, two contacts here. Uh, it's a double pole switch. It's got two contacts, one for the live, one for the neutral at the back. It's got another little switch here that does something else inside as well. So it's, it, it, they can, you can get hold of them, but not here in the UK. A bit awkward in the UK to get one uh, sent over via eBay or something like that into the UK. It's about 40 quid. So quite expensive just for a switch. If you're in America or places like that, you're gonna pick them up for about $22, something like that, if you live in America. But uh, here, like I say, a bit more expensive. I could have sent away for one, but I've done something else. We're gonna to come to that in another video. But today's video, we're gonna address something else that happens with this amplifier. Once it's made all that crackling noise and everything else, that's definitely this switch causing that. We leave it on, I'm gonna show you a little recorder. You can listen to a little recording, should I say. Uh, what happens is a few little crackles and popples going on afterwards. So, you know, I've turned it on, it's settled down, but we're still getting a few crackles and popples. popples. So let's listen to that, how that sounds. Okay, so after initially turning it on and all the crackle go, we still get a few little pops and crackles in the background there. We could pick up a little bit of humming, a little bit of hum there as well, you probably heard, a little bit of mains hum. These are old receivers, used cheap parts at the time, uh, and so did the 302 hour amplifier. I mean, this was done on tight budgets, these, I think these retail for less than 100 pound. Uh, the amplifier did definitely, and it's probably just a little bit over. They wanted to keep it on a tight budget and still get some good, you know, good quality sound out of it. And these caps are one of the places where it probably suffered. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to change the capacitors in the power supply, on the actual main power supply ball. So I'm gonna show you me taking the top off and showing you whereabouts they are and just uh, changing them capacitors. Also, we're gonna change two capacitors and a little ball that clips in there. You'll see it as we go along, a little ball that clips in there that's got another little power rail, uh, a few more diodes on it and that, uh, a little bit more. It does a different supply uh, in the amplifier. The actual uh, main supply uh, goes to the actual power amp and the other supply goes to the preamp, etc., and a few other little places. So we're going to change the power, uh, capacitors on both them supplies altogether. Six capacitors, four on the main supply, and two on the other one. There's obviously other capacitors we could change. We could go right through the unit, but uh, we're just going to change them and see what happens after we change them. Okay, so there's the four capacitors there. We're going to replace. And to do this, we're going to have to flip the uh, receiver upside down and get through it from the bottom. So we're going to have to take the bottom plate off. But before we do that. I want to take a picture of these. I'll mark down where the positive and negative are of them capacitors so we don't put them in the wrong way around. I think they're lab actually labelled up on the board as well. But we've got a little bit more of help here because these are quite tightly in there, quite close to this board here. But this board actually unclips out, not completely, because it's still got some wires attached to it. But uh, we're going to actually undo this board. And to undo this board, we're going to have to turn the unit around. So let's just do that. Okay, to make our job just a little bit easier, like I say, this board comes out. The capacitors are just here behind the board. We're going to take this board out. It's still connected with some wire, so we need to be a little bit careful. Got two little sockets here, it kind of clips into. One's down here, and one's over this side. And to get these out, you've got to kind of like push the sock, pull the socket to one 
side kind of thing of the clip holding it in place just pulled it across and pull the board out at the same time. So we're gonna give that a go. I've got a screwdriver just in case I can't do it with my hands. But so uh, we'll give it a go. Oh, there you go. One side's come out straight. Now this is a bit more awkward where you may need the screwdriver to get in there. And hopefully, a little bit of luck, there you go. So that board actually comes out gently. Got these few, only a few wires on there and there you can see the capacitors a lot easier to see so we can push that board aside we can make a note or take a picture of where the negative was on there but i think it's on the board as well but it's good to make a note as well just in case the board's labeled up wrongly this is the way they were in there so uh, let's take a few pictures of them and mark down exactly how they're wired up on the board and then we can replace them okay I'm, i think you can see this easy enough this is probably the easiest way for me to do it a little bit of noise in the background with a pc sorry about that but anyway here's the four capacitors we're going to change here these are the four main power supply capacitors so if we go on to the next picture we're just going to mark where the negative of all four of them are just so we know and take a picture as well so we know where they are just in case there's no markings on the board so we take one of them out don't do them all at once do one at a time remember it is take a picture just in case you forget we want to make sure we get these in the right way round so okay if i go to the next one there you can see them there's the negative the capacitor nicely labeled up and i'll just put a little black dot so i know where they are take a few pictures like i say look on the underside of the board this is where the four caps are actually situated we've got one here to there bridges across there's one cap there's the other cap there there's the other cap there and there's the other cap there so that's the four capacitors we're going to be unsoldering so as you can see i've unsoldered one already and replaced one as well at the same time i've up these to 50 volts same value 50 volts rather than the 35 because there's about 35 volts there somewhere around there anyway so these are running at full capacity voltage wise you can see it's positive and negative labeled up on the board as well and that tallies with where the negative was when I took that capacitor out. Because sometimes this could be labelled up wrong, but you know, rarely, but double, double, double check, always best to double check. And uh, there's the capacitor, I've replaced one of them there, and we're gonna go around and do all four of them. So once all four of them are done, we're gonna wander over to this board. This is a little board that you, you see me unclip outwards. And uh, there's two, the two main caps on these board, this board here, on the power supplier for the preamp and a few other little bits in the uh, receiver is this cap here, this cap here is the main caps on that power supply. There's some other caps as well, you could change, we could go around them all, but just for the time being, just gonna change these two here, because I had them uh, laying about, so I thought I might as well change them, and it's not a bad idea to do that. So there you can see, there's still one leg of the capacitor, still in the board there, I should use this the other way around really. There's one leg still in the board, the other leg's been taken out, but just using a bit of uh, solder uh, wick, uh, braiding, that kind of thing, or a solder sucker or something like that just to make sure that uh, you've got a nice uh, hole there ready to put the new capacitors in and if we just have a quick look at the photograph of me again I've upped the voltage on these uh, I can't remember what the other ones were I think they were 35 volts again I've upped it to 50 I think on this uh, occasion and there's the two new caps in place so that's both boards done there uh, like there's more capacitors on this board to do but we're just going to go with them two first of all and see what result we get by changing them six capacitors in total. Okay, now we've done them alterations. We changed four caps on the main board, two capacitors on the kind of sub board, shall we say. We're going to put my little uh, recorder on my headphones. I'm just going to put them up there and show you me of a video of me turning it on after doing them capacitor replacements. Don't forget the switch is still not working properly. You're still going to hear that buzzing noise first of all. So let's just have a little look at that video. Okay, so you could tell there was a difference. Now, I'm on the heart, I can't say change them capacitors did that. The reason I'm saying that is, don't forget, I took that board out, changed two capacitors on it, and put it back in. I did clean the contacts with some contact cleaner on the board and the socket as well. Uh, on, on, the, on the main board, so we call it the motherboard, and on the actual board that clipped in, they've got like edge connectors. I cleaned them with a contact cleaner. A very very fine emery cloth on there as well like a fine sandpaper pushed it back in six capacitors changed noise gone so there's a possibility that just cleaning in contact maybe one in contacts was a little bit dodgy just 
given that noise, I don't know. But uh, this is more common really with noisy transistor, noisy diode, something like that. But in this particular case, it's corrected it. So you may go through this if you've got that little bit of noise and think, well, it hasn't done nothing. So you know, it could quite easily be a noisy transistor or something like that. But in this particular case, it has cured it, as you could hear or couldn't hear. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, I mean, I did hear a difference. You know, when I first turned this on, without doing anything to it, obviously got through that mains buzz and everything else and the crackies going on in the background. It's, it sounded pretty nice, quite a nice sounding receiver, which I expected it to, uh, considering it's got a 3020 amplifier inside. But uh, after changing that capacitor, there was a, you know, a, a difference in the base. The base, straight away I noticed the base sounded nicer and the top end sounded a little bit more detailed and a little bit crisper as well. So it had its advantages anyway. Uh, just changing them capacitors was an advantage, even if you didn't get rid of that crackling thing, I would have been looking elsewhere to try and find out where them little crackles and pops were coming from. But lucky enough, as I said, doing that has uh, remedied, that, remedied that as well. But it may not be the case in, uh, you know, for you, but still worth changing them capacitors in this old unit. Don't forget they used cheap parts back then. And then as you, you know, if you're getting that main zum, that mm, in the background kind of thing, and it's well worth changing them four capacitors on the main board anyway, right near that rectifier on your uh, 7020 or even on your 3020 amplifier, but that, that's uh, up to you. Going to come back, a few more problems still with this amplifier. One I haven't mentioned, I forgot to mention, got a transformer that buzzes, so we're hopefully going to cure that, uh, get rid of that. Got the light missing here, side little bulb here, the lights to display, that's not working. If I just turn it on, you can see the light flickering there probably as I tune in the station, but um, this bulb's not working, so we've got to come and sort this bulb out as well. And um, what was the other problem? Got, oh yeah, and the main switch, obviously we've got to sort that main switch out so it doesn't arc over. So I'm going to do that with a, a different kind of switch, not the correct switch, but another switch. But uh, we'll do that in another video. Okay, that's it. I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.